The most common way of expressing the location of a point in three-dimensional space is using rectangular coordinates that we're very familiar with. We've, we've done this for some time, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this one, but it's where you have an ordered triple x, comma, y, comma, z, and then you find the location of x, y, and z on all their respective axes, and then you find where these merge or meet in space, and then that location is uniquely identified as a point in space that corresponds to this ordered triple right here. But there are other ways that we might have to express a point for various reasons. Um, the two other popular forms that we would express a point would be cylindrical form, which we talked about in the last video, and spherical form, which is what we're going to talk about here in this video. So let's, let's take a look at that. So spherical form is when you have a point in space and you're identifying it also by an ordered triple with three quantities, but the three quantities are, are different than x, y, and z. Uh, these are expressed as rho, theta, and phi. Let, let me write this down for you. Rho looks like almost like a letter P that has a little tail or a little leg on the end, R-H-O. And then theta is the same theta that we use for cylindrical form and then phi is a new letter. This is an angle, just like theta is. I spelled P-H-I. All right, now what, what are these guys? What, how do rho, theta, and phi differ from x, y, and z? Well, let, let's start with the rho. The rho is the direct distance from the origin out to your point. So it's not broken up into an x, y, and z component. It's the direction from the origin on a straight line out to your point. Notice that's even different than the r value that we had in cylindrical form because that r distance was in the xy plane. A uh, little side note about rho, rho can't be negative so this rho will always be greater than or equal to zero um, so it's always going forwards in some some particular direction the theta is the same theta that it was in cylindrical form. This is uh, the angle from the positive x-axis that it swings out in the xy plane. So if you look at this almost like a shadow in the xy plane, if you let the z coordinate be zero, if you just look at the xy ordered pair for the point uh, in the xy plane, that's going to be that angle there from the positive x-axis out to that line segment. So not, not much different there. That's the same theta that was in cylindrical form. Um, your new guy, uh, your new angle is going to be phi. Phi we haven't, haven't seen before. This is an, another angle, but it's the angle from the positive z axis down to the line segment from the origin to the point. Now that's in my experience, this is the one students struggle with a little bit because if you were just going to, you know, create a new form or a way of expressing a point, just just uh, yourself, uh, it seems like the natural thing would be to have a row like this and have a theta like so, and then have the phi almost be like an angle of elevation, so to speak, uh, or at least that's I don't know, at least that's that's the way that seems natural to me. But on closer inspection, that's actually not a very good idea because you'll notice this line segment right here where the phi would be measured from that I'm highlighting in blue, that's never consistent. As the point moves around, it might be here, or it might be here, or it might be here. So it doesn't give a good, consistent you know, measuring uh, point, of, point of measure. But on the other hand, if you're measuring it from the z-axis down, to the line segment from the origin to the point, that never changes. The, the positive z-axis is always straight up, so it gives a good consistent place to measure the angle from. So in, in hindsight, it's, it's actually a better idea to have phi measured uh, right there. So you can use these spherical coordinates for a lot of different reasons. A lot of times you'll use it for like triple integrals. A lot of times it's a little better for that. Um, the vast majority of the problems you'll probably wind up doing are conversions. That's probably the most common question is they'll give you a point in rectangular coordinates and ask you to convert it to spherical or vice versa or something like that. 
So that's what we're going to focus on for the pretty much the remainder of this video. Uh, one quick note about fee before I, I, I go on, I, I forgot to mention this. The fee angle has to be uh, between 0 and 180. And there's a good reason for that. This drop down angle, you know, obviously it could start at zero if your point was on the z axis, but then as as your uh, point leaves the positive z axis, then you get a, a little bit of an angle, a little bit of an angle, and then anywhere in the x y plane would be 90 degrees, and then you keep going and keep going until you get to 180. But if it exceeds 180, then it would actually be uh, an, an angle less than 180 on the opposite side. For example, if it was you know 190 then we could just call it 170 and change the theta angle just spin around to the other side and use the angle that's less than, than 180 so just remember the phi always has to be 0 to 180 and the rho has to be non-negative all right so for speed if you, all you need is just the conversions then let, let's do this um, here they are so if you want to pause the video and jot them down you can go on to the next video, um, but I'm going to actually show you where these come from. So if you want to stick it out with us, I'll show you where, where these formulas come from. And, uh, and that's, that's what we're going to do next. So if you need them, just pause the video and copy them down. But if you want to hang with us for a minute and bear with us, we'll go through and, and see where these guys come from. Because it's kind of interesting to see, you know, these didn't just come out of thin air. Uh, people carefully thought about where, um, how you could do these different conversions here. All right, so I'm going to, I'm going to need a, a good little bit of space. So I'll tell you what, let me erase this up here. And let's go for it. Let's go for it. So let's see. How would we get, let's say, the x coordinate? If we were given a row, a theta, and a phi, how, how would we get x? So let's think about this for a minute. So in my spherical coordinate system, right here is x. Right here's x. So how could I get this distance right here from on the x-axis? Well, uh, you'll notice, and, and this is how I'm going to do a lot of these conversions, you'll see a very natural right triangle that's made here, right there. And so if I, and I have an angle, I have this angle theta here. So if I had this angle, and this is the adjacent edge to the right triangle, if I could maybe find the length of the hypotenuse, I could do a cosine relationship because I would have the angle, the adjacent edge, which is what I want, and the known hypotenuse as well. Because right now the only distance that I know is rho, but right now that's, that's not super helpful. All right, so now my question turns to, well, what's the hypotenuse? And this, this line segment that I'm drawing right here is gonna be super important for all of our conversions. So I'm going to highlight it in pink so I can just say the pink guy. All right, so what, what is the pink guy right here? Well, to find that out, you'll see that there's actually another right triangle that's kind of upwards. Here's the right angle for that triangle right there. And I actually know a little bit about this right triangle as well. Here, I'll, I'll even sketch it out here real quick. So if this is rho right here, and here's your right angle, and here's the guy I'm after. Let me give him a name. We'll call him, uh, just temporarily, we'll just call him A for a minute. And then I need an angle. Now, now I, I, theta has nothing to do with this triangle because theta is in the xy plane. But there is a phi, but the phi doesn't look like it's in my triangle, but it actually is. Can you see where phi would be in my triangle? Hopefully you can uh, alternate into your angles match. And so that phi is the same phi that's right here. So here's phi right here. So you would have a sine relationship for this guy. So that leg here, A, that I've been after is gonna be rho sine phi, rho sine phi. So remember that, I'm gonna erase some of this, rho sine phi, rho sine phi, rho sine phi. Get rid of some of this stuff. Okay, so what was that again? Rho sine phi, I think it was. So the x coordinate would be rho times sine of phi times the cosine of theta. 
And in case that's not clear, let me just make it clear one more time where that came from. In this triangle in the xy plane, cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, right? Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, but that um, hypotenuse there, that was our rho sine phi that we discovered after a little algebra. Solve for x, multiply rho sine phi to the opposite side, and this is what you get. So there you go. So it's a little sticky. Uh, if that made sense, then the rest will go fairly smoothly. All right, how do you get the y? How do you get the y coordinate? So here's, here's y back here. Um, notice if this is theta right here, then again, alternate interior angles agree with one another. So this right in here would also be theta on the opposite side of the pink line segment. So for that, we're going to use the same idea, but now the y value is the opposite edge, not the adjacent edge. So we're still going to need the same pink hypotenuse, which is still uh, rho sine phi. So I'll copy that down, rho sine phi. But this time, instead of being adjacent over hypotenuse, because it's opposite over hypotenuse, we have sine of theta as opposed to cosine of theta. All right, how about, how about the z? How do you get z from all this mess? Well, I, I see the z value. Z is right about here, maybe. Here's z. Now, z doesn't have anything to do with theta. Theta is in the xy plane. But it surely has something to do with the rho that would affect z. And the phi would affect the z value as well. All right, for that, I see another triangle. I'll, maybe I'll do this one in orange. Okay, this line segment right here and right here. We see those three there. Here's a right angle right there. So what are the edges of this? I see a, uh, a z value as the adjacent edge to phi. Um, I see rho as the hypotenuse. And then you have the, the angle phi here. So adjacent and hypotenuse, that's a cosine relationship. So you'd have um, cosine of phi equals z over rho, adjacent over hypotenuse. Solve for the z. Get rid of that right there. So z would be rho cosine of phi. Now, yet it goes without saying, you have to be very careful dealing with your theta versus phi. It's super easy to mix these up. They're very particular in the order. You know, you can't just say cosine theta sine um, or sine theta cosine phi you can't just mix and match them however you want it's very important you're you're putting the right angles in the right right places all right so that's what you do if you're given rho theta and phi and you want x y and z so you can call that spherical two rectangular but how do you go the other way if you were given an x a y in a z, how would you find the direct distance out to your point like this? Um, for that, I think we could just use the distance formula, if you think about it, because I mean, this is an ordered triple x, y, z, starting at 0, 0, 0. You can just do the distance formula, I think. So let's see, rho would be the square root of x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared plus z minus 0 squared. Um, you can clean that up a little bit. I'll switch these to green. That would give you x squared plus y squared plus z squared. If you wanted to get rid of the ugly radical, you could just square both sides and say that equals rho squared. It just look, looks a little prettier. All right, let, let me number these for you. Number one, number two, number three. Uh, this one's number four. Okay, so that's a good way to get rho. Is you basically just do the distance formula. Get rid of this real quick. All right, now, um, oh, the, the theta is an easy one, actually. Thankfully, we finally get a little break. The
the theta, we can do solve for theta the same way we did in cylindrical form because that theta is the same as this theta. So we're just gonna cheat a little bit for this one. Do you remember how tan theta was y over x? Probably remember that. So we're gonna get that the same way. If you have the x and the y coordinate, theta obviously doesn't depend on z, then you can just do an opposite over adjacent relationship and solve, solve for your theta there. All right, last one, how are we gonna get phi? Phi is probably the trickiest one to get given an x and a y and a z. Uh, I mean, just think about it, you know, how would you find this angle measure right here given these three values, it's just kind of weird. Uh, for this one, we're gonna cheat a little bit. If you look back at all your old formulas, all these are obviously true. I'm gonna look at number equation number three here. See this phi right here? I'm gonna solve for that phi here real quick. So I'll do this in orange. We would have phi equals, let's see, you take z over rho, z over rho, and then you would take the arc cosine of that to solve for phi, so cosine inverse. Now you say, well, wait, Devin, that, that's, that doesn't work because you're supposed to go from rectangular into spherical like phi. Z is rectangular, but rho is not. Rho is not rectangular, so you, you can't really do that. Well, we're going to do one other little trick. All right, we'll take uh, for our last equation here, number six is kind of a big one. We're going to say that phi is equal to arc cosine or cosine inverse. That's the same thing that I wrote back here of z over, and instead of rho, I'm gonna be kind of clever here. Look at this equation right here, number, number four. We can solve for rho in terms of x, y, and z. So if you solve for rho, you would get the square root of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. And you say, well, Devin, that's kind of like cheating, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, it, it is kind of like cheating, but it, but it does the job. If you give me an x, a y, and a z value, I'll plug them in here. I'll take the arc cosine of that, and I'll get a phi value. And the range of the arc cosine function is 0 to 180 anyways, so that phi should come out appropriate um, already. So here's your, your different conversions. And so you see, they, they didn't just come out of thin air. You can actually derive where all these guys come from. And if I actually cover this up and pull up this other page, you'll see this is, this is the same conversions that, that we had here uh, earlier in the video. So if you made it this far, congratulations. I'm proud of you for sticking it out so long. Um, hopefully you now understand uh, how to convert back and forth from rectangular coordinates to spherical coordinates.